Hey Skate Chatters, welcome to another 5x5. Five five. Uh, this week I've been playing with the the Google Art Appreciation app, Art and Culture app. It's got some, some pretty interesting results. I don't think these people really look like me, maybe they do, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, figured we'd go right ahead and get on into it. Here comes topic number one. So, banned for eating a cockroach? <laughs> Lol, what? <laughs> Apparently, that is exactly what happened to YouTube food vlogger Kevin Strail, or L.A. Beast as he's more well known, for a video he did in 2013. In the video, L.A. Beasts vs. Cockroach, which I've linked to in the description, Beast does the unthinkable. He puts a cockroach in his mouth and eats it. And yeah, I watched it. <laughs> the weird thing about this story, other than gastric roach aside, is why is YouTube taking action on a video from five years ago? And especially when you consider the whole Logan Paul debacle, how is it fair that LA Beast gets a three month suspension from live streaming for something he did several years ago while Logan Paul gets a slap on the wrist? I mean, do I need to remind folks that eating bugs isn't really considered all that terrible in some cultures? We eat bugs, bugs eat us, we're all connected in the circle of life. Plus, I mean, you can see that kind of content on plenty of other YouTube videos, believe me, I've looked. So what gives? Uh, does what happened to LA Beast seem fair to any of you? Let me know in the comments. Next up is a pretty heartbreaking story about a skate shop in Seattle, Washington that is in legal trouble after submitting to be part of a contest that was designed to encourage skaters to build their own skate spots. The story comes from Vice and it involves Seattle's 35th North Skate Shop. Uh, According to Vice, the owner agreed to participate in the contest being put on by Nike SB and Transworld Skateboarding, in which 14 skate shops were given $500 Home Depot gift cards to help with their projects, and told to get creative. Unfortunately, the shop owner's original plans for the money fell through, so a group of local skaters offered to put the money to good use. But, instead of building a modest project like the one the owner had in mind, the skaters built a 15 by 15 foot concrete bowl on Green Lake's Duck Island. The story of how they did it is actually really impressive. Fortunately, authorities thought less so and slapped the shop with a six figure lawsuit, leaving the shop in dire straits and the skaters in hot water. As a result, the skate scene around the shop may be in danger of extinction. Like I said, it's a sad story, but if you'd like to see the video they submitted of their project, check out the link in the description below. It's definitely worth a watch. So, the Consumer Electronics Show happened last week, and because I'm kind of a tech geek, I'd love to see what new stuff is coming out. Also, as someone who spends a lot of time outdoors, I'm very mindful of sun damage and the risk of skin cancer. So what if there were a device that could monitor how much UV radiation you are actually get being exposed to when you're outside? One such device made its debut at CES 2018, created by L'Oreal. It's a tiny, wearable UV sensor, about the size of your thumbnail. It requires no battery to operate and can be placed anywhere on your body. It works with a smartphone app, available for both iOS and Android, that syncs the data from the sensor using near-field communication. The data collected by the device allows users to determine when they should be mindful of UV exposure. Although I'm not sure if that means it will act as an alarm once you've received too much UV radiation, or if it merely reports back how much exposure you've had. The L'Oreal UV sensor will be available exclusively through dermatologists in 2018, with much wider availability expected in 2019. L'Oreal hopes to price the sensor at around $40 or less. And now, I would just like to take a moment to look at this sexy, sexy Yugen Enen boob. It's in a Trimax frame from Kaiser that I saw on Instagram last night. According to Kaiser Frames, the Trimax is designed to turn your aggressive skates into tri-skates with 110mm wheels. And damn, it just looks fine. I'ma need a moment. I saw this on the 3x3 wheels tri-skating community Insta on Instagram last night, and uh, I, I just had to comment I might even make this a regular thing, you know, where I just take a moment to look at a dope setup and be like, yeah. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Anyway, by the time we're reading this, unfortunately the frames are probably sold out, because there was only one set left last night when they posted. Sad face. But yeah, something about this frame on this boot, I'm just, I'm in love. What a sweet setup. If you're a fan of tri-skates, you should probably check out the 3x3 community on Instagram for plenty of great photos and videos. And lastly, 
The weather certainly got weird this weekend. It went from 65 degrees and pouring rain to snow and ice and temperatures in the teens overnight. As such, I didn't get to go skating as much as I wanted, but I decided to make the best of it with what I could. And so, please enjoy this one minute of me sliding on the ice before wrapping up another 5x5. Five five. Alright, so yesterday it was 64 degrees and raining. Uh, today it's, right now it's 16 degrees. It's colder than that, I think. And uh, all of that rain has turned to ice. That's about enough. And that's about it for this week. You have a great day and keep skating.